Go. All right, so this video is about New Zealand is a price taker, which relates to our international trade topic. So New Zealand is considered a price taker because the country is so small, we don't have big enough impact on the world price. Okay, so it's all about the efficiency and the allocation of resources. So in New Zealand, we use our resources that are available to us to create agriculture, dairy products, wood, whatever our main top exports are. So because New Zealand utilizes our resources to create these products, we have a surplus that is greater than our demand in our country. So we would export that surplus. When New Zealand wants to import products, we buy products from overseas and we buy them at the world price. New Zealand can't influence either exports or imports because we aren't big enough to make an impact on the rest of the world and the rest of production and the allocation of resources in other countries. So we're going to look at now when would New Zealand export and import different goods. When we look at exporting and importing on graphs, we can look to see if we are an exporter or an importer of goods simply by looking at the difference between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. We look at this using our supply curve and our demand curve. So just to recap, demand is showing us the demand that a consumer requires. Supply is relating to what the producers are providing. On our y-axis, we always have the price, and on our x-axis, we have the quantity. So if we were to read this graph here, we start by looking at the two curves, and where they intersect in the middle is called our equilibrium. So this is where the perfect point between the price and the quantity of supply and demand is equal. Okay, so this is where producers providing goods and services are making enough goods and services that is exactly equal to what the market wants, our demand. All right, so if we are at this point, we can label our price as, so this is our equilibrium price, for example, in New Zealand dotted line across where it hits the middle equilibrium point, we go down, this is our equilibrium quantity. If that is to change, that's where we can find out if we have a surplus or a shortage. So in this graph, the world price is higher than the price in New Zealand. So if the price is here, we can then draw a dotted line across where it hits our demand curve, we draw a dotted line down, this gives us our new quantity demanded in New Zealand. That is what those labels mean. If we continue going across at our world price, where it hits the supply curve, we draw our dotted lines down. This is the quantity supplied in New Zealand at this new price. The way that we read this graph... The way that we read this graph is using our quantity line at the bottom, which is our x-axis. So we can see here that if there was numbers along here, our supply, the figure that would be in our supply would be greater than what the figure in demand would be. So for example, if it went up in a thousand increments, this might be 7,000, this might be 3,000. So that would show us that the supply is 7,000, but demand is only 3,000. So that reflects the law of demand and the law of supply. Because at a higher price, producers want to supply more because it's more profitable. At a, lot, at a higher price, consumers don't want to purchase as much because they don't want to pay the highest price. Consumers always want to pay the lowest price. So we can see the difference between here and here, our demand and our supply, is the gap which we would export because it's a surplus. 
So for example, this is a New Zealand market for lamb. New Zealand have raised, grown all these, all this meat, this lamb meat, and it's we've got this much to sell, but the New Zealand market only wants to buy this much. So instead of wasting that excess supply, we could export it to other countries who wish to purchase it. Okay, and those countries would pay the world price for it. So that is how we would tell if um, a country is an exporter. We're going to now look at if a country was an importer. So when we would import when the world price is lower than the equilibrium price. So same thing. We've got our supply curve for New Zealand, our demand curve for New Zealand, our equilibrium price, and our equilibrium quantity. When the price is lower than the price in New Zealand, we do the same thing, draw our dotted lines across where it hits the supply curve, go down, that is our quantity supplied. Keep going where it hits the demand curve, go down, that is our quantity demanded. Now we can see on this axis that demand is greater than supply. So think about that just logically. We want more than we have, okay? The market want more machinery than what we currently have available. So to fill that gap, we need to import the difference. So between our supply and our demand is our importing quantity, which we can label as M, and this is also called a shortage. Okay, so because we don't have enough to supply our market, we need to import that difference. Making sense? Cool. So we can summarize that if the world price is below a country's domestic equilibrium price, there is a situation of excess demand and that country will need to import to fulfill that excess demand. Vice versa, if the world price is above a country's equilibrium price point, there's going to be a need to get rid of that excess supply, so we will export. Before we looked at this topic, we used the two country model where we had two graphs side by side. That was looking at two different countries and who was the importer and who was the exporter. This is using a similar concept, but using just a world price graph. So if we were to put the whole world's market, let's say it was here, this would be the world price. The world price line goes all the way across to meet the world's demand and we can, we can then see a similar scenario. World prices above the country's equilibrium point, so we're going to export that difference. Don't worry about these labels. They mean the same thing, we've just learned them differently. But for example, this one here is quantity consumed domestically after trade but we just use quantity demanded in New Zealand. Same for this one here, quantity produced domestically after trade, we just use quantity supplied NZ, okay? So don't get confused about the labels, they mean the same things. Always just read the curves and countries. This is just summarizing again the opposite. So the world price is now below equilibrium, if we were using our two country model to compare the world price, this is how it would look. Remember the world price goes across both market graphs. And again, different labels, same thing. If we were to make changes to the price taker model, we can, like in level one, shift both the demand and the supply curves because there's other factors other than price that shift the curves. So for example, if New Zealand is an importer and the New Zealand demand increases from D to D1, 
we show this by shifting our demand curve. So just as we have done previously, we draw a whole new line. So a shift to the right of demand is always an increase because we're increasing along the X axis. And if we were to show a decrease, it would come back to the left. So once you, so step one, you shift your curves. Step two, you always relabel your curves. So we've moved from D to D1. Originally at our world price, our supply would be labeled down here. This we would label as what? So when you're doing your labels, you always start Q, quantity. What curve is it? S. What market is it? NZ. So Q, S, NZ would be your label for there. Same thing, go across. Where it hits our original demand curve, we would label this as Q, D for demand, New Zealand market. The gap between QS and QD was our original importing quantity, where this M is here. When the demand curve has shifted, we now need to find our new demand. So the line, the world price, continues on, where it hits our new demand curve. This is our new quantity demanded. So you would label this as Q, QD1 NZ, okay? Because it's now the next quantity demanded. So we've moved from QS here to our new QD here, and we can see that gap has now increased. So we would conclude and say that because demand has increased, our quantity for imports has also increased <laughs> from M to M1, okay? So you can see here that our you can see here that our imports have increased because the demand has increased. So when you're writing your written answer, you always refer to all the labels, every single label that you've made, you've changed and made. Any questions about how imports have increased? No? Okay. The change that is shown on this model is a change in the world price. So for example, New Zealand as an importer and the exchange rate depreciating causes the world price to rise from rise to PW1. This is because the value is now less for the New Zealand dollar and we can't purchase as much. So if the exchange rate depreciates, that means one New Zealand dollar is now worth less than the other currency. So the amount that we could purchase originally with that same dollar has decreased, okay? So the world price has gone up because we need more New Zealand dollars to buy those goods or services. So we always start at the original. PW, go across where it hits the supply curve. This would be labeled as Q, S, N, Z. Go across, this would be labeled as QDNZ, so demand is greater than supply, so we need to import the difference, okay? So that would be your original importing quantity. Now the world price has gone up, all right? So in a question, you might get the scenario, so the scenario here is that the depreciation, that the exchange rate has depreciated, so therefore the world price has gone up. You would need to most likely draw a new world price in and show the change. Okay, so you would draw the red line, new world price, and then do your new quantities. So this would be your new QSNZ1, new quantity supplied number one. This would be your new quantity demanded number one. Therefore, the amount we need to import has what? Decreased. Okay, so we've moved from here to here to here. So this was the amount that we were originally 
importing, and now we're only importing this much because the price has gone up. So again, think about it logically. The price has gone up, we're not gonna wanna purchase as much, are we? Because it's not as affordable. And supply and demand have also changed. Any questions? Awesome. Okay, so this is again shifting our demand curve, but this time we're an exporter, not an importer. So initially, we've got our demand curve, our supply curve, the world price. Again, here would be our quantity demanded, NZ, where it hits the supply curve, quantity supplied, NZ. Supply is now greater than demand, we're an exporter. Okay, but demand has increased, it's shifted out to the right. So we've got our curve, we've shifted it, therefore our new line, our new demand has come to here, and our original exporting quantity has gone from here to here, to here to here. So because demand has increased in the domestic market, we're not exporting as much. Okay, so because all the people in New Zealand want to buy the good, we sell the good here and what we have left is less to send overseas. This graph is showing us if we are an exporter and the exchange rate appreciates. If the exchange rate appreciates, that means the value has gone up for every one New Zealand dollar, therefore the world price would fall. So again, we start with our original quantities. This would be our original exporting quantity. Make the change. We could conclude that our exporting quantity has decreased from X to X1. Any questions? 